Welcome to Story Recap. Today, I will show you a sci-fi action film from 2014, titled, Edge of Tomorrow. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts with a news anchor summarizing an alien invasion of Earth. Just when things seem hopeless, an allied human army with new mechanical suits wins a major battle in Verdun. Rita Vratasky, who is a special forces soldier, is hailed as a hero after killing hundreds of aliens, which are called Mimics, one of the talking heads on the newsreels. Selling Rita and the war effort is Major William Cage of the U.S. Army. Cage wakes up on a helicopter ride to London to meet with the Western Allied Commander General Brigham, assuming that the General wants Cage to help him improve his public image, but the General instead orders Cage to accompany the first wave of Allied troops landing in France and provide ground coverage for the media. Cage has no experience in the field and tries to blackmail the general through the media. At first, the general seems to relent, but then he orders Cage to be arrested. Cage wakes up in the afternoon on a pile of duffel bags at Heathrow Airport, which has been turned into a military base. A sergeant shoves boots into his hands and calls him Maggot, before another sergeant named Farrell takes over. It turns out General Brigham has sent orders to Farrell to demote Cage, from officer to private. Cage has been assigned to a group of eccentric soldiers which is known as the J-Squad. As Cage is introduced to them, Farrell forces the J-Squad to eat the cards they are playing with, and then instructs them to prepare Cage for the next day's mission with them. The next day is Invasion Day, and Cage is a nervous wreck. He is put into a suit, and the members of J-Squad don't even teach him how to take his gun out of safety mode, because they believe he will die quickly. When they are in the aircraft, they all pick on Cage making him more nervous. However, just as they are about to drop from aircraft onto the French coast, the back of their airship explodes and the squad drops down prematurely. Although the operation to retake Europe was supposed to be a surprise attack, the mimics are well prepared and ambush and slaughter the humans. Sergeant Rita also lands on the beach, but gets killed within minutes. The surviving members of the J-Squad are all killed rapidly. Cage, who is still in shock and on the verge of death, reaches for a claymore mine when a giant blue mimic lunges at him, and with one explosion, Cage and the blue mimic die. Cage's body is doused in the alien's blood. In the next scene, Cage wakes up in a panic on top of the duffel bags. The same sergeant is there, calling him Maggot and Farrell again takes him back to J-Squad. Despite his desperate attempt to explain what is happening and that the mimics will ambush everyone, he wakes up again a third time after getting killed when he is trying to save Rita, but no one believes him. Each time, he is deployed and dies only to wake up again on the duffel bags. With each loop, he becomes slightly more adept at trying to save the members of the J-Squad, and of course Rita. In one loop, he survives long enough to save Rita from the ship that will explode and kill the incoming mimics. Realizing what has happened, Rita asks Cage to find her when he wakes up before they both die again. Cage wakes up on the duffel bag again, but begins to cooperate with Sergeant Farrell in the J-Squad in order to buy himself time to find Rita. After several disastrous attempts at slipping away, Cage finally manages to escape and find Rita in a training hangar, surrounded by training drones. Rita starts off coldly, but when he explains everything to her, she takes him away to a weapon-building bay where her acquaintance named Carter works. Dr. Carter is an expert in mimic biology. When they get there, Rita tells him that she too was stuck in a time loop at Verdun, and the loop was created by the blood of the Big Blue Alpha Mimic. Carter used to be a researcher and his theory. That all mimics are just neural manifestations of one overmind Omega alien led him to develop a device that locates the Omega if stabbed into an alpha mimic. Cage tries to process all of this, but Rita states that for them to find the Omega, first they have to survive the invasion tomorrow. She then proceeds to train Cage, killing him a few times when he is injured, so that he wakes up on the duffel bags and starts all over again. In one loop, Cage is badly injured. Rita tells him to make sure he dies completely, instead of being accidentally revived, because once the looper receives a human blood transfusion, the loop is broken. And this is what happened to Rita herself. Suddenly, Cage receives a mental vision after he dies. He sees that the Omega is somewhere in a dam in Germany. Rita and Carter believe that the visions are due to Cage actually being an Alpha, after being infected with the blue blood. Therefore, Cage and Rita focus on surviving the invasion. They become much improved in combat on the beach, but despite everything, they both keep dying, and Cage loops over and over. He grows attracted to Rita, and watching her die over and over again takes its emotional toll as well. In the following loop, he gives up, decides to escape from the base, and goes to the bar where he thinks he can escape the loop, but it does not work. The mimics end up finding him and kill him thus sending him back all over again. After several failures and deaths, Cage and Rita finally make it inland. After finding a helicopter in a farmhouse, Rita realizes that Cage is trying to persuade her to stay in the farmhouse and confronts him. Cage admits that they have looped to the farmhouse several times already, 
but every single time Rita dies. So, he tries to save her from another death by going alone. When Rita asks him why it matters what happens to her, Cage is speechless. However, Rita is now well aware that Cage is attracted to her. Cage grows closer to her, but it seems like she is only interested in the mission. Rita is shocked and ends up intentionally getting them killed. In the following loop, Cage decides not to seek out Rita and instead makes his way alone to the German dam. However, going to the dam does not really work as he had expected. He finds nothing, as the Omega is not there, and he is ambushed by an Alpha, who attempts to strip him of his ability to reset time, but Cage deliberately drowns himself. In the next loop, Cage, Rita, and Carter put the pieces together. They do so to try and figure out what the visions are all about. They are in luck, because finally, some things start making sense after being put together. They realize that the victory at Verdun was a ruse set up by the Omega Overmind to lure the humans into invading Europe, where all the human armies would be ambushed and annihilated. With no other clues, the device Carter made following his theory, which even got him fired, is their last chance. But unfortunately, Carter says that the device is still not fully ready, as it is missing some equipment. The good thing though is that now they know what exactly they have to do. So, Rita and Cage switch focus on obtaining the equipment, which is in possession of General Brigham. After going through a lot, having faced several failed attempts, Cage and Vertasky infiltrate the Ministry of Defense, where Cage convinces Brigham to give him Carter's prototype device that can locate the Omega. They finally manage to get the device and stab it into Cage's leg. However, Cage now finally sees the true location of the Omega. The monster resides under the Louvre Pyramid in Paris. As they attempt to escape from the Allied headquarters, their getaway car crashes, and the airbag knocks out Rita before she is able to kill Cage. In the next scene, Cage wakes up in a hospital. He realizes that he is out of the loop now. Since he has been given a blood transfusion, he has lost the ability to loop time forever. Rita frees them, but with no more loops, and only a few hours left in the invasion. Cage returns to the base and finds the J-Squad. They recruit the J-Squad to help destroy the Omega, before the invasion begins. Once they get there at the Louvre, the Mimics attack their airship, and in the ensuing firefight, half of the J-Squad is killed. Cage, Rita, and the three remaining J-Squad members decide to use the remaining engine power to slide the airship into the museum. The rest of the J-Squad sacrifice themselves to buy time for Cage and Rita so that they can make it into the museum. Once they finally get there, Rita tells Cage that she will distract the patrolling Alpha Mimic while he will go and detonate a grenade belt on the Omega, which is submerged underwater at the bottom of the Louvre, before luring away an Alpha. Standing between them and the submerged Omega, Rita kisses Cage to thank him for getting her as far as he did. After a brief chase, the Alpha captures and kills Rita, while Cage dives underwater to get to the Omega. The Alpha dives after Cage and stabs him, but Cage keeps it together, pulls out all the grenade pins, and drops the belt into the Omega. The Omega explodes and dies, and with it, all the mimics die. As Cage dies, the Omega's blood seeps into him. He wakes up in shock and finds himself on the helicopter ride to London from the morning before the invasion. But this time he awakens in an alternative history. In this alternative timeline, he watches the news, where the general announces that after a mysterious explosion in Paris, the mimics are all dead and the human forces will begin sweeping through Europe the next day. All members of the J-Squad are seen alive and well. When Cage arrives at the base, Cage goes to find Rita, and when he finds her, she does not recognize him and greets him with the same coldness as she did each time they first met in a loop. She says, yes what do you want? And Cage smiles at her. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.